What do we have for Capricorn? Knight of Swords, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius energy. And if you notice here, Cap, the Knight of Swords is on its side, slightly leaning more towards the reverse. But we're going to consider it in both positionings because it aligns perfectly with the message I have for all of you. And this is also very relevant to the astrology right now. We have Mercury in retrograde. We have Saturn in retrograde. We have Neptune in retrograde. We have Pluto in retrograde. But what I'm getting here for you, Cap, is a message surrounding a direction that you've been moving in. And it's as if you've had to make a detour recently to reevaluate something or go over some sort of finer details. And I feel that this is this Mercury retrograde energy coming through for you. The Knight of Swords in its upright position is an energy where you're completely certain about the direction you're moving. You have no doubt that is where you're headed. It's an energy of some sort of lifestyle change that you're preparing to make. It could even have to do with travel, moving, something like this. But overall, there's just a big movement of energy that is being represented here. But when we get it in the reverse, it's telling us that the universe is encouraging you to look at your game plan. Look at some of these finer details here and not to make any decisions before you have hammered out a very well thought out plan. I feel that whatever this is representing in your life cap has been a long time coming. You're so hungry for change and you saw an opening and you decided to take it. But given the fact that the universe is basically saying, wait, 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 hold on, Cap. Let's make sure we get this right the first time. It's suggesting that you need to make sure you're not taking one step forward that is going to lead you to taking 10 steps backwards. Cap, I feel that a lot of you are having a lot of flashbacks, a lot of memories about a time before you were this person that you are now. This is all happening to show you how far you have come on your path, Cap. I also feel that a lot of you are having insecurities highlighted to you at this time as a means to address some of these things so you can move forward in power. And this is working in tandem with this big decision or decisions that you are making on your path at current. Simply put, Cap, I feel that the universe wants you to be more confident within the man or woman that you have become and understand that you do not need to make any irrational decisions on your path moving forward, and you certainly don't need to rush yourself before a strategic plan has been put in place. What do we have at the sacral? Seven of Pentacles, Taurus energy at the sacral. Perfect. Literally just followed everything I said, because now we're seeing this energy of patience being highlighted with the Seven of Pentacles at the sacral. There's something here, Cap, that you're moving towards, and this is already yours, okay? The only thing that can get in the way of you not being able to access this is yourself, is you not realizing how much you've grown and that you do not need to move like maybe you once would have, right? Maybe this is something you've gone for before and it didn't come through for whatever reason. But this time is different. A lot of you are on a completely different timeline now. You've become this more refined version of yourself. You've earned this cap. And I feel that you've absolutely proved yourself to the universe that you are the best recipient for whatever this is here. For some of you, it's a new project, could be a new job, a career path, but it feels as though it has something to do with your stability. This is one of these decisions that I feel we only get a handful of in a lifetime, right? You know, every moment of every day, we are making decisions that align us with different outcomes, different versions of ourself. This can be called timeline jumping. But this particular situation that I'm picking up here is one of these decisions that influences the trajectory of our life. This is a big one, Cap. There's very much an energy here of hurry up and wait. And while you're waiting, while you're being patient, the universe is having a little review with you about your path, how far you've come. Your recognition of your growth is a necessary 
component to you stepping through the portal and onto this new timeline. What do we have at the solar plexus, please? Six of Cups, Scorpio energy at the solar plexus in reverse. Wow. And here it is. Now I am starting to see what's going on here, Cap. I feel that you're going towards something that you were told by an individual or individuals somewhere along your path that you would never be able to attain. You were told that something here was unrealistic. I feel that there's also a very strong influence that was surrounding you at this time that was trying to get you to really live in the past. Now, what's interesting here is we just spoke about how you are having these memories of a version of yourself before you had become the person that you are now. And now we have this energy showing up here that has been trying to get you to live in the past. I mean, they're two very different things, but I feel that the messages are crossing over here so you can recognize the difference between the two. It's as if you had an influence around you that wanted you to become hung up on all of your shortcomings in the past. When the universe is saying to you, no, you can think about those things, but don't get hung up on them. Recognize how far you've come. Uh-huh. Starting to pick up on an energy here that was trying to play God in your life, Cap. This could be a family member, a friend. It could have been somebody you were in a relationship with. It could have just been an influence that you picked up, again, somewhere along your path, quite possibly even in childhood, just a particular way you were programmed, a particular way it could have been particular behavioral patterns that you engaged in that altered your own perception of yourself. It's going to be different for all of you out there. But there's something here. And, you know, Cap, the downloads leading up to this reading, there was quite a few of them. But one of the first ones I got was in regards to somebody being caught on astral. I had these visions of spiritual police inside your energy having captured an individual. And that it was paramount that you stayed very focused on yourself and your path moving forward and not to get distracted. There's a heavy energy that I've also been picking up, Cap. I feel that you're in one of these times in your life where you may hear about some people from your past. You may hear about some news regarding individuals that might have made your path a little bit more difficult. And this is one of those as above, so below, macro to micro kind of perspectives that I'm picking up here. You know, I get a download about individuals being caught on the astral, right? Spiritual police, capturing somebody. And then it shows up in your life as you hearing about something happening to somebody. But I feel that this is the cycle that a lot of us are entering into now, Cap. Not just the Capricorn Collective. This even feels like something that is happening globally. I'm seeing the scales of justice in my mind's eye tipping, Cap. This is one of these kinds of energies. But like I mentioned quite a lot in my readings, this is the result of you having taken some sort of action in your life to self-empower. This is the most effective way to get the energy moving. And this is why we're getting this message about you not getting distracted right now and just staying very focused on the path ahead. You mustn't look back, Cap. What do we have at the heart, please? Too many cards. Wow, Six of Cups again with the star. From this other deck here and that really speaks about the message about individuals trying to keep you stuck in the past so you can't show up where the universe needs you to the star right energy of being in the spotlight and it's more metaphorical it's just you being in the spotlight of your life you just being in that allocated position that the universe has reserved for you what do we have at the heart Three of Wands, Aries energy at the heart. It's like here you are preparing to take flight, right? It's like you finally see your way, Cap. And this Mercury retrograde would have served you very well. By the time we start coming out of this energy, you're going to start feeling a heightened sense of direction returning to you. And you would have zeroed in, I feel, on a lot of these things here that can't go with you, right? See, now's the time where you're looking at those finer details, right? Again, zeroing in to truly see why it was you weren't able to go down this path much sooner, 
right? Right? It's like you're starting to recognize what all the common denominators were. Person, place, behavioral pattern, addiction, thing, whatever it is. It's like the universe really needs you to get a grip on this now, right? So once you step into this new timeline, you can stay there. And this goes back to what we were channeling through at the beginning of the reading about hurry up and wait. You're so used to doing things a certain way, Cap, that has led you to the exact same result that finally now, by doing things slightly different and by doing things in accordance with the divine's will for your life, you will actually see the breakthrough. And once you get to the other side, you're going to look back in disbelief that you didn't get there sooner because that restriction, that common denominator, whatever it is, is going to be so clear to you that you'll wonder how you didn't see it sooner than you did. This three of wands is also speaking about this time that you're in cap. It's a time of preparation. It's also speaking about this expansion that you're getting ready to take in your life. Again, it could be travel or it could just be the energy around you is moving. But the three of wands can also be an energy of pursuing the unknown. And that really speaks about the difference in your path, you trying things a different way, and then finally having this breakthrough. Wow, I just heard the coordinates of freedom. Yeah, it's like you're breaking out of some sort of karmic cycle of some sort of limited success or not quite being able to have the breakthrough that you needed and see how it's like he's standing here and it looks like he's reading some notes and he's kind of positioning himself trying to find the exact coordinates and then the eagle takes flight that eagle being you beautiful what do we have to throw please too many cards. What do we have in the throat? Ace of Cups. Cancer Scorpio Pisces energy at the throat. This Ace of Cups was trying to come out earlier. I saw it at the bottom of the deck when I was shuffling this particular deck around. We have two decks on the table right now. So when this happens, when I see a card trying to come out or it's making itself known to me and then it comes out, it really puts more of an impact behind the particular energy of that card. And this Ace of Cups at this throat position is really representing to me some sort of emotional balance. This emotional balance is the necessary component for you to be able to have this breakthrough. And I'm hearing something in regards to distraction, reaction. I just heard every action has a reaction, right? So this could be, okay, I'm hearing something about the 11th hour. Okay, now this example here is going to give you all an idea of what I'm picking up. But it's like you have been trying to move in a particular direction in your life. And then in the 11th hour, something happens. Something external to you unfolds in your life to take away your focus, flood you with distraction. Things happening to get you to react, right? Every action has a reaction. This Ace of Cups is you overcoming this now. Now, if this has to do with individuals in your life, this is you not giving these individuals an audience any further, not even giving them the opportunity to get into your energy and derail you from your intended target. There's a tremendous amount of growth that I've picked up here for you, Cap. You're just carrying yourself differently now. So much so that I feel if you are dealing with opposing energies, opposing forces, let's say, they don't even know what to do. They don't know how to approach you. I also feel that there's people inside your energy that feel like they've lost you, but it's actually the other way around, Cap. You've lost them because they refuse to do the work and to up-level to meet you on the same path that you are heading down now. You know, this is something that we're starting to recognize is very common in this day and age. People that refuse to do the work, they refuse to support you when you are doing the work, and they would much rather see you unravel any sort of growth that you have put your time, effort, and energy into, and to just come back home, just meet them on their level, right? I call this vibrational wars, right? It's when you're raising your vibration, which can just be another way of speaking about you up-leveling or ascending or kind of waking up to your path. And then there's those other individuals that feel slighted by all of this, so they come for you, say things like, who do you think you are? Right? You think you're better than us, right? All of this sort of stuff. As opposed to 
Cap, I'm really proud of you. You're a great example of what you can accomplish when you sacrifice all the things from your life that don't serve your highest good. But Cap, I'll tell you right now, if you wait around for somebody to say any of that to you, you'll be waiting forever. And then I have the Knight of Swords again on the bottom of the deck from this particular deck. But now it's in the upright. So now we're starting to see the breakthrough. It's like everything the universe needed you. I just heard to register, right? It's like you needed to compartmentalize your path up until this point. Ah, that's it. But all of this has seemingly taken place now. So you're ready for the path ahead. What do we have at the third eye? Eight of Swords, Gemini energy at the third eye. Unbelievable. This card literally followed what I just said in regards to that other Knight of Swords that I saw on the bottom of the deck upright. You're now moving forward, right? And this Eight of Swords here is an energy that is speaking about you being liberated from something. It's like an energy of being let out of some sort of imprisonment, but it's spiritual in nature. But this is all based on your perception. This is all based on this time of reflection. It's like the universe saying to you, okay, Cap, you understand now what it was that was always holding you back. And now you have the confidence to move forward in the knowing that whatever this is here will never be able to have power over you again. That Eight of Swords is also with the third eye. The third eye is all connected to your vision and you being able to see beyond the material world, right? It suggests that you have this heightened sense of awareness. You have this powerful intuition that you're now allowing to guide you. So not only have you become a more confident version of yourself, but you have an intuition that is firing on all cylinders to boot. One could argue that you are now completely unstoppable. But this is all the result of you shutting out any sort of naysayers, you shutting them down before they even have an opportunity to open their mouth to you. And this also has them in a place of fear because the tactics, the weapons, let's say, spiritual in nature, that they once formed against you no longer work. They fizzle out. This is a scary place for the so-called enemy to find themselves in because this is when they start to realize that you are being protected by something that is beyond this world. But this all has to do with you having made the decision to self-empower and push forward on your path and no longer allowing any of these opposing energies to tell you who you are and who you are not. What do we have with the crown, please? <sighs> Unbelievable. Perfect. Ten of Pentacles. At the crown. And Cap, everything we've channeled through up until this point speaks about the necessary actions one must take if they want to unlock the spiritual inheritance, the spiritual blessings in their own life. This cannot be accessed until you have put in this hard work right here. This is not easy. This is some of the most difficult things you'll ever have to do in your life. But it's necessary. And we all go through it in some capacity. But this is very clear, Cap, what I'm looking at here. It doesn't even matter where each one of you is on this particular path or journey. Some of you might be just now starting out and some of you are more advanced on the path. That's okay. But overall, this is a blueprint of how this is accessed and is also showing you details of what you'll most likely encounter. You know, right now I'm really thinking about the Bible and how Scripture is very relevant to our lives, right? And how the Bible is so timeless because the stories resonate through the ages. It details events that will unfold in our life when we move in a certain direction. Everything is in there. And I feel that this right here is like a little piece of scripture cap, because again, it doesn't matter where you are on your path. Each and every one of you will face this in some capacity before 
you access this Ten of Pentacles at the crown. The crown is all connected to your connection with the divine, with the universe, with source, with God. It speaks about your strong faith. It speaks about the wisdom that you had to gain to be able to access this. It's like you've gone on a journey from the root chakra to the crown through many cycles of life. And then finally, you are able to find the key to access this spiritual inheritance, which is just a complicated way of talking about wisdom that you have gained, knowledge, experience, understanding, which is the necessary ingredient to pull this off. What do we have at the foundation, please? Okay, what do we got here? Queen of Wands, Paimon, we'll take both of these. Nine of Pentacles, Emdusius, Aries, Leo, Sag energy, Virgo energy. There's an energy here that is trying to stop you from closing out this cycle. There's an energy here that wants you to doubt yourself or to self-sabotage. Maybe these are things that you would have done in the past. I mean, who hasn't done that, right? And usually, there is a path of self-doubt that we go down. There's a path of self-sabotage that we go down because there's things that need to be healed about ourselves, which leads us to gaining a certain amount of awareness about ourselves, the path that we've walked up until this very moment. But this energy here wants you to stay in that space. This Queen of Wands is a very nasty kind of energy, very mean-spirited very cold, very apathetic energy. This is somebody who's more focused on everybody else's life with a little to no focus on their own. These are those energies we picked up on earlier on in the reading that refuse to do the work themselves. And we all deal with these. It's just the world we live in. But what I've noticed, Cap, is the more time you spend on this path that you are preparing to step onto, if you haven't already, the more you start to notice these energies. They're everywhere. It's like there's seemingly more of them than there is of us. These days, a lot of people call these NPCs, right? Non-player characters. For those of you that don't know, when you're playing a video game and you see other characters in the video game that you can't control, they're just controlled by the actual video game you're playing, those are what we call NPCs. They're like the Agent Smiths, right? They're the individuals that have been programmed by the simulation, by the Matrix, and they are everywhere. But we are living in a time now where they can't hide. And it's wild because you'll start to realize that some of these people you've known, you'll start to realize that some of these people are your family members, people that you used to be friends with, uh, could even be people that you dated. Most of us, uh, well, I would say all of us, were once NPCs ourselves, right? Before we knew, before we became the individuals we are now. But in saying that, I also know that all of you who are listening to this right now always felt like something was calling you from within. Something felt off. Something felt strange when you were living that life before you were the person you are now. And this goes back to what we picked up at the beginning of the reading about this being a time of reflection. Really recognizing how far you've come, Cap. This is so incredibly important. And you know, this is something I have to remind myself all the time. Because like a lot of you, my path was not easy to get to where I am now. In fact, I fought many wars. It was a horrendous journey that I would never wish upon my worst enemies to get to this very moment that I'm in with all of you right now. But when you get to this space, all you want to do is just keep moving forward. You're less and less interested in what happened to you, what you experienced, who formed weapons against you. That just starts to fade away, it becomes a distant memory, it becomes a kind of bad dream. It's almost like it never existed. But I personally have to constantly remind myself of how far I've come just to sit in the moment. And, you know, usually when I do this, I become very emotional because I start to realize that miracles have unfolded in my life. And this is exactly what I'm getting here for you, Cap. This is a miracle unfolding for you. This is you accessing what other people told you wasn't possible. There's a certain kind of magic that surrounds you when you step onto this path. And it's during these moments that you start to recognize 
that the presence of the divine in your life is undeniable. You feel something guiding you. You feel something protecting you. You feel something loving you in a way that you've never felt before. But it's all found by going inward. And then we have this Nine of Pentacles. Right underneath the Seven of Pentacles. Picking up an energy here, Cap, and I feel that this is in relation to... I'm getting ringing in my ears, so I feel that this is confirming what I'm about to say. What I mentioned in regards to someone being caught on astral, right? It's like you had been working on something, let's just say, generally speaking. And then in the 11th hour, this energy comes through, stifles you, creates some sort of delay on your path. And you're left with thinking that it's just not your time or you're not able to access that or you just don't have what it takes or it's just not for you or you're not good enough. But lo and behold, the entire time there was some sort of force, person, whatever it is, strategically making sure that you weren't able to access this behind the scenes. For a lot of you, this could have been somebody that was very close to you. I feel that this person took advantage of your kindness, took advantage of your time, and time and time again, without you even knowing it, they systematically created some sort of blockages for you. You know, it's not difficult to do this, especially if this is somebody very close to you, like a family member. Sometimes all it takes, if this person has access to you, and you think that they have unconditional love for you because they're a family member, you know, sometimes all it takes is for them to say, nah, that's not for you when they know it is. And by default, you want to trust that person. You know, this is a heartbreaking set of circumstances to realize because you don't realize until a lot of time has passed that the thing that had been blocking you the entire time was literally right underneath your nose, right in front of your face. And then look, here they are on astral. Well, I didn't know that Cappy was the chosen one. Right? Trying to feel sorry for themselves. Trying to act like they had your best interest in mind. <sighs> Boy, I've heard this one before. Forming weapons against you without your knowledge. And then when you find out about it, passing it off as if they were doing something to help you, to benefit you. You know, this is like somebody saying to you, well, I spiritually attacked you as many times as I did. So you would have a spiritual awakening and become the best version of yourself. When they know damn well that isn't why they did that at all the only reason why you had that awakening is because god and the divine began to work in your life to wake you up to what it was that was holding you back and i have the four of cups in the bottom of the deck cancer energy now this is interesting because it follows what i just said perfectly here you are it's like you're this horse you're feeling very let down and then this kind of weird bird here that looks like they're cocking their hand back to punch you it's almost as if they're consoling you, but they're forming weapons from the shadows, let's just say, okay? It's like, here you are, because in the 11th hour, something always happens, and you're not able to get the breakthrough. And then here they are, like, oh, that's okay, don't worry, you know, just stay here with me, and we'll be fine here. And it's speaking about what I mentioned in regards to this person, these people, creating the blockages, but then staring you in the face and saying, oh, well, maybe it's just not for you, right? It's similar to somebody creating a problem in your life without you knowing and then providing you with the solution. But they're doing this to control the flow of energy. They're doing this to control the outcome. They're doing this to control you and your mind. This is nothing short of somebody trying to play God in your life. And when they get caught, they pass it off as doing something to benefit you. What do we have at the solar plexus, please? Boon, the sun, Leo energy at the solar plexus. And further reiterating everything we're saying here. Because as we can see, there's this individual that's essentially praying to this demon, right? Somebody playing God in your life. And this is also representing what I said about you not getting the breakthrough. The sun in its negative polarity is an energy of uh, lacking some sort of success or 
It's an energy of not being able to focus, uh, you having some sort of lingering doubt all the time. And now I'm thinking back to what I said in regards to us all coming from karmic cycles in our life where we were kind of like NPCs too, but you always had that thing inside of you calling you that made you feel like you were different, right? That lingering doubt that this was the path you were supposed to be on. It's just really speaks about just having a feeling that something's not right, something's off. It's that feeling of having an inner knowing that there's something better, there's something more. And this is coming out right underneath this Six of Cups, right? Getting a lot of ringing in my ears right now. So I feel that this is what's going to allow a lot of you to wake up to what you may be dealing with or what you went through. Recognizing people in your life that try to keep you stuck in the past. And I'm also hearing that you need to be very careful about surrounding yourself with people like this. You know, I just said in, I think, one of the collective readings I put out that we are the sum of the five closest people to us. And that's what I'm getting here. You better believe that because it's very true. So maybe it's time to take stock on who it is you have in your energy, who it is you spend your time with, who it is that you look to or talk to, who it is that you share your goals, your dreams, your aspirations with. Because I'm telling you right now, some of you do not even know what you are dealing with. You're telling these people about what you want to accomplish in your life, and they're behind the scenes speaking wickedness out into the universe surrounding your path. What do we have at the heart, please? Andros, folly, chariot in its negative polarity. Again, delays, affecting your focus. There's an energy that's trying to get you to lose control, get you to lose your direction, an energy that just wants you to give up, right? Oh, don't worry about it. That's not for you. That's not who you are. That's unrealistic to go for that. And it's coming out right at the heart. So there's something here around true heart's desires, something that you feel calling you. I'm picking up a message here for individuals that have been called to do something by the divine and have been met with a lot of struggle, setbacks, and delays. This is a message for people who have potentially very obvious enemies, okay? So you need to use proper discernment when you listen to all of these readings. Don't just assume the message is for you because you're listening to it. You will know exactly what this pertains to if the message is for you. This energy that I'm picking up here, right, folly, this speaks about what I mentioned in regards to people doing things behind your back without your knowledge. I don't know why I'm getting this example, but it's simple enough to where you should all get an idea of what I'm talking about here. But it's like somebody tying your shoelaces together right? Tying your right shoe to your left shoe, you putting on your shoes, you standing up and falling over and falling on your face and hurting yourself. And then this person watching and saying, oh my God, who would do that? Right? That's what I'm getting here. And now we have the Six of Swords, annual perception and unity. This Six of Swords is speaking about a rite of passage. There's a big breakthrough that a lot of you Capricorns out there are going to have. And I feel that this reading here, in combination with some other things that you may encounter on your path, are going to all come together and make up a kind of roadmap for you to get this breakthrough. And again, I'm picking up something here surrounding moving, relocation, uh, travel. There's just some sort of transition that is taking place here. Okay, I just heard this is you jumping the timeline. I'm getting this vision right now of you standing on a book, right? It's like a giant book, and you jump from one book to another. And then I heard you say, that's no longer my story. This is my story now. Very interesting. I've never had that vision before, but I like it. It tells me that the book that you have jumped off of was a story that you had not written. But this new book, from front to back, every word, every stroke, of the pen was done with your hand. Complete control. What do we have at the throat, please? Oh, perfect. 
Wheel of Fortune, Raphael. Uh, unbelievable. God has healed. Heals all disorders. Protects travelers and medical workers. Just heard a crow outside. So there's an energy of transformation, rebirth. Uh, some sort of cycle has been closed in your life or is preparing to close. The Wheel of Fortune is an energy of destiny. And this represents life cycles. If there was going to be one card in the entire tarot that represented you jumping from one book to the next, it would be the Wheel of Fortune. There's an energy of complete awakening here. And it's like you've held on to this big picture vision that you've had for your life. That deep knowing that there was always something more. You know, it blows your mind when you finally, right, jump on to that new book or step into this new timeline, however you want to put it. And you think back to that time before you access any of this. And all you had was that inner knowing. When I find myself reflecting on that time in my life, I can't help but be met with emotion because to think about that past version of myself can be frightening, right? To think that that version of yourself before you became the person you are now had no idea what they were capable of and how it's only by a complete miracle that you've gotten to where you are now. You know, anyone who goes through this process, no matter what the divine has willed for your path, is a kind of healer. And this speaks about what it says right here. Protects travelers and medical workers, right? Whenever I read that, it makes me think about people who've gone through the awakening process, kinds of um, healers who have overcome great obstacles in their own life to get to where they are now. All of you, no matter what you're doing in your path, have been gifted with the ability to help others heal themselves with what you yourself have overcome. That's what a healer is. What do we have at the third eye? Three of wands again. So we have it twice. Satale, the god of hope. Construction of the universe, help with great works, protection from adversaries. So, as you can see here, this Eight of Swords, you're blindfolded. And then this Three of Wands, you're not blindfolded, but it suggests that your faith is so strong that you don't even need your eyes to see because the Divine is guiding you. Whereas this Eight of Swords, it's like an energy of spiritual blindness. You've been made a victim by all of these weapons that have been formed against you. You're consumed by the self-doubt. You're consumed with the lack of success, with the failure that is all the result of this energy that is external to you. But what you start to realize is that it doesn't have to be that way, that you actually have complete control. And that's what the Eight of Swords is. The Eight of Swords is an energy of willingly keeping yourself in a place of restriction rather than understanding that you have the power to change your circumstances. And this Three of Wands is the perfect card to follow this Wheel of Fortune because it says right there, construction of the universe. So it's like you're manifesting your entire reality, right as I said that. I got a really high-pitched ringing in my ear. Okay, I'm getting something around visual manifestation, holding on to the dream, holding on to the vision. Very important right now. Three of Wands is visionary energy. The Wheel of Fortune brings through the supporting energy to help you manifest and co-create an entirely new universe for yourself, which really just speaks about your perception of reality shifting. And again, it's right at the third eye, right? Third eye all has to do with your imagination, your intuition, your vision. And this is what timeline jumping is. You're not literally jumping into a new world. Everything is the same. But the way you process your reality, your world, your universe has shifted. It's different now. And a lot of it has to do with the fact that you've let go of fear. And when you break all of this restriction down, it's really just fear. This is not easy to do. Our 
entire reality is based in fear. Everything is based in fear. So it makes sense that when you can begin to release fear from your life, you just start to have a completely different experience. Your perception, your reality, your universe changes. It starts to reflect the version of you that is no longer living in fear. What do we have for the crown to close out the reading, please? What do we got? Four of Wands, Aries energy at the crown to close out the reading. Ahasia, God the Savior. Rectification helps one live in peace with everyone. The Four of Wands is an energy of harmony. It's an energy of excitement, but it's also an energy of stability, which is interesting because I feel that once we start coming out of these retrogrades, you're going to have a much different grasp over your foundation, your stability, and your path moving forward. We've just gone full circle here with this reading. And we are now starting to see very clearly that there's an incredibly positive outcome to all of this with this Four of Wands. Cap, I feel that we have just taken a look at what you are overcoming in your life to get to this new timeline. It's actually very clear to me. And I certainly hope that you can take this reading and refer back to it when you need as a blueprint and a kind of roadmap to help you make your way to this incredible outcome that I see for you here. Ten of Pentacles stacked with Four of Wands. You accessing your spiritual inheritance, and stepping into a kind of divine glory and a recognition on your path that was once just an inner knowing before you became the person that you are about to become. Cap, this is the message I have available to you, depending on where you are on this timeline, should you choose to accept. I'm going to go ahead and leave it here. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you would like a personal reading, you can find all of my contact details in the description below this video. And thank you for your donations, Cap. Take care.